and three days after the birth, my husband finally came. But he was not alone. He brought an unknown woman with him. I was taken aback, but I tried to get a word out. Who is this woman? I managed to squeeze out a few words, and my husband smiled and said, She's my girlfriend, or better, my future wife. What do you mean? I'm tired of you. What? My name is Elizabeth. I'm a 25 year old company employee. I just recently got proposed by my boyfriend, John. I met him when we were in high school. We started dating during our freshman year of high school and we broke up once during our senior year. After we both graduated from college and became adults, we met again when we went out for drinks with our former classmates. When we met as adults, my impression of him changed again. We went out a lot and started dating again. Three years after the beginning of our relationship, he proposed to me. I will love you, Elizabeth, for the rest of my life. So, will you marry me? Those were the words of the proposal. I believed in his words and agreed to marry him. I was very happy in my new married life. I can be at home with my husband every day. We both work, so it's only at night that we see each other during the weekdays. But even so, I was happy to be able to stay with him until morning without having to go to either of our houses every single time. When we were in high school, we couldn't cook at all, but in college, we each lived on our own. We both improved our cooking skills, so we were able to share the household chores and have a well balanced life. My husband's specialty was fried food, and his fried food was excellent. I'm not good at fried food, so I'm glad that my husband is willing to cook it for me. On the other hand, I'm good at cooking Japanese food such as simmered vegetables. My husband used to praise me for the exquisite taste, which is neither too rich nor too bland. I thought we would continue to support each other and live happily together. One year into our marriage, I became pregnant. I was so happy that I immediately told my husband, John, I'm pregnant. Oh, really? Yes, I am. Oh, yeah. My husband was so surprised. He had his mouth hanging open like in a cartoon. John? Oh my god, I'm going to be a father. Well, your reaction is a bit slow. Because you surprised me so much. I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm excited too. If we're gonna have a baby, we're gonna have to do our best. My husband was so happy that I was pregnant. I knew I would enjoy raising a child with him. My husband was very concerned about my health at first. Elizabeth, take it easy, okay? You can quit your job if you have a hard time. Thank you, but I'm gonna try until my maternity leave. Okay, I'll take care of the house chores. Thank you. Thanks to my husband's dedication and support, I was able to rest well during the morning sickness. And as I entered the stable period, the time of delivery gradually approached. But then my husband started coming home late. Did you work late again today? Yes, I've been leaving things to my co workers. Now that you're in the stable period, I thought it was about time I returned the favor to the company for letting me go home on time. I see. So you went out of your way to come home even though you had to work all the time. That's because your body is the most important thing. But I neglected my work too much. I don't want to be unemployed after the baby is born. That's true. I'm a little nervous about staying at home alone, but if that's the case, I don't blame him. Well, maybe I'll go back to my parents' house when I take maternity leave. 
My husband agreed with a relieved look on his face. That's good. Then I can work overtime without worrying. I'll miss seeing my husband until after the baby is born. But I would also be grateful for the support I would receive from my parents at home. Thus, I returned to my parents' home as soon as I started maternity leave. It's so much easier to be in a familiar room and not have to do the house chores. Having my mother close by also gives me a sense of security. But there was one thing that worried me a bit. My husband has been slow to respond to my messages. Until now, no matter how busy he was, he would reply within the day. When I was sick with morning sickness, he used to reply right away even when I was at work. But nowadays, at the earliest, I don't get a reply until a day later, and sometimes as late as two days later. And his replies are not so nice either. The other day, I sent him a message asking him if he was still busy at work, and told him not to overwork so much. He only replied, Yeah. Because I don't see him, it makes me worry that he's not responding. But that's not a good thing because I'm pregnant, so I decided not to worry about it. I thought I should hold off on contacting my husband for a bit. I try to be in a happy mood by thinking about what I'm going to do after the baby's born. I bought a lot of baby stuff. Oh, this? Dad, you're buying too much. No, it should be like this. We need to make sure the baby's safe and comfortable. You're so excited about your first grandchild. You're the one who's always asking questions to the shop assistant. Thank you, mom and dad. My parents were looking forward to the birth of our child together. I didn't get depressed when my husband's reply was slow. And now my due date has arrived. I sent a message to my husband that I was due today, asking him to be ready to come to the hospital as soon as he hears from me. But he didn't even read that message. Well, maybe it's because he's at work. My husband knows that my due date was coming up, so he could have been a little more aware. And my labor pain started, and we went to the hospital. I was finally going to have the baby. I didn't have the time for calling my husband myself anymore, so I asked my mother to leave a voicemail telling my husband that I was going to give birth today. But he didn't show up even at night. He didn't return any of my calls. I went up to the delivery table without him. The birth was harder and longer than I expected. Because of the umbilical cord was wrapped around the neck of my baby, I couldn't easily deliver the baby. The baby was born almost a day after the contraction started. But when I saw my baby with my own eyes and picked the baby up in my arms, all my fatigue and pain were gone right away. It was a beautiful baby girl. You did your best to come into the world, didn't you? I said goodbye to my baby for a moment, then I lay down and rested my body, which had been exhausted from the long hours of labor and delivery. Later, I woke up in my hospital bed to find my mother watching over me in my hospital room. Are you feeling better? Yeah, I feel pretty good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Hey, what's wrong with you, mom? You don't look well. I mean, I haven't heard from John since then. Yes, that's true. What the hell is my husband doing? We've already had a baby. I was so mad. Why didn't he come to the hospital? I sent him a message saying, The baby's already born. A few hours later, he replied that he could go to the hospital the day after tomorrow. Why can't he prioritize to come here? I basically tried not to think about anything negative until the birth. Now that the baby is born, I don't have to suppress those emotions. Why can't you come now? When your own child is born, you should fly in. 
Is your company so strict that they won't let you leave? I put all my anger into the message I sent him. But my husband only read the message and did not reply. What is this already? He was so happy when I told him I was pregnant. Why does he seem so disinterested now? My parents were furious at my husband's unreasonable attitude. My father said he would give him a lecture next time. Three days after the birth, my husband finally arrived, but he was not alone. He brought an unknown woman with him. I was so surprised that I couldn't speak. You seem to be in good condition. Then don't send me a message like you're in a dear strait. Huh? He not only came with an unknown woman, but I suddenly had to face my husband's cold attitude. I was taken aback, but I tried to get a few words. Who is this woman? I managed to squeeze out those words, and my husband smiled and said, My girlfriend, or better, my future wife. What? Then the woman next to him said, Oh no, what do you mean by future wife? She laughed and lightly tapped my husband's shoulder, saying, Oh no, I'm embarrassed. What do you mean? You don't get it, do you? It means that you and I are divorced. What? Wait a minute. You mean you were having an affair? Well, adultery doesn't sound so good. It's more like I found someone new to love and we hooked up. I don't know what he's talking about. I'm just tired of you. Huh? You know, men are attracted to women who take care of themselves. My husband said that and started to intertwine his arms with the adulterer. Are you saying I wasn't taking care of myself? You grew fat and bloated because you stayed at home all the time. I was just lying in bed because I was pregnant and had morning sickness. Besides, it's normal that you gain weight when you're pregnant. You were having an affair because of that? I want to keep romantic feelings towards my wife, even if we're married. But I don't have those feelings for you anymore. I met someone even better. My husband and the adulterer started flirting again. I've reached my limit. Okay, I'm done. Can you just get a divorce with me or whatever and get the hell out of here? I'll leave without you telling me. And my husband and the adulterer left the hospital room. My husband never once looked at the child's face. He didn't even ask me the gender of the child, so I'm sure he doesn't care anymore. I guess I'm going to be a single mother now. All of this, as soon as I gave birth, hit me quite hard mentally. While I was feeling down, the hospital room door opened. Huh? I was startled. It was my husband and my mother-in-law who entered the hospital room. Why? Elizabeth, I heard the whole story, and I'm really sorry about my stupid son. Apparently, my mother-in-law ran into my husband and his lover in the parking lot. When she questioned my husband about it, he told my mother-in-law exactly what he told me. She told me that she sent the adulterer home first. Then she grabbed him and brought him here. What do you think you are doing? You have an affair with another woman while your precious wife is pregnant, and then you ask your wife for a divorce. You have no idea how many times your father would have hit you if he knew. My father-in-law already passed away a few years ago. I didn't have a choice. She approached to me and I fell in love with her. How could I have married such a man? I see you like her so much. Elizabeth, do you still want to stay married to John? My mother-in-law asked me that, but I had already decided on my answer. No, I want a divorce now. Well, 
That's fine. My husband's face lit up when he heard that. Then there's nothing wrong. Then you're going to pay alimony for your adultery and child support. What? Of course you do. You committed adultery. You have to take responsibility for that. And if you divorce Elizabeth, I'll stop sending you money. What? No way. Sending money? What do you mean sending money? What? Elizabeth didn't know about this? His income is so low, so he asked me to send him a few thousand dollars every month. He said he was trying to protect his life with you. I never heard that. My husband's salary was low, but I was making up for it with my higher salary. In other words, he was using the money my mother in law sent him to pay for his affair. This made my mother in law reach her limit of anger. I'm going to make you pay me back every penny I've ever given you. I will cut all ties with you. Don't you ever come back to my house again. No, wait. Elizabeth, I'm sorry to have disturbed you. I'll get you a good divorce attorney. And you can take as much money as you want out of this guy. Oh, thank you very much. And my mother in law left the hospital with my husband. I demanded divorce, alimony, and child support from my husband. Of course, I also demanded alimony from his adulterous partner. My husband was deep in debt, and my mother in law abandoned him. And the adulterous partner left him too, because he was no longer needed if he doesn't have any money. He spends his days paying alimony and child support while living alone and poor. Of course, I have no intention of letting my child see my ex husband. I just want him to feel sorry for the rest of his life while paying the money. I, on the other hand, have returned to work as a single mother and I'm working hard while raising my child. I still keep in touch with my mother in law and show her my grandchild's face. My ex husband was an asshole, but I can thank him for letting me meet my mother in law, who is a wonderful person. Having an affair while pregnant is disgusting. I wish there was a harsher punishment for him. But I'm glad the woman got rid of that kind of scum. I hope you and your daughter live happily together from now on. <laughs>